All right, time for another draftphysics.com video presentation. Debate physics also.com. But uh, no debaters willing to debate those videos with any theory, you know, explaining how it's possible. So one of the statements made uh, related to the kinetic energy theory, but it's sort of different, is this idea that you can bang things into another thing and you can cause a total of extra momentum. That is, you can not only have extra momentum in the direction you're going, but you also get some extra momentum going in another direction. Um, and it seems to me theoretically impossible that could be true in that all these hundreds of years we've had this capacity to make free momentum and nobody has figured out how to capitalize on it. Okay, so that doesn't seem very realistic, just like it doesn't seem realistic that it takes nine times the fuel, uh, nine times, <laughs> to go three times as fast. Yeah, that doesn't seem realistic. Okay. Anyway, um, man, it's a seems argument because they won't do the experiments well. So they do them with books and plywood and, you know, rickety crap we do in our basement because it's physics. I mean, physics can't be done with any kind of resources because it doesn't have any money. <laughs> you know, it's not like it's building accelerators for billions of dollars or billion dollar telescopes or any of that, so they don't have any money. They can't do experiments. All right, it was just ridiculous that this is what physics has come down to. <clears throat> Anyway, um, I'm not going to play Despar's video. He's just an obnoxious shit who's trying. He's just so desperate. He's so horny, <laughs> you know, to prove me wrong. And that's all it's about for him. <clears throat> uh, his petty little uh, insecurity issues. So anyway, <clears throat> um, he claims that the two balls, after they collide, are moving at the same exact velocity. So all I had to do was put my little mouse pointer where the one ball is stationary and the other ball is heading for it. And then they collide and the two go off. And clearly they can't be the same velocity because they travel a different distance. And the distance you travel is going to be dependent on how much gravity you have to overcome and your momentum is going to decide that. So if you have three times the velocity, I mean, and you're three times the mass, three times the velocity is three times the momentum. So you will travel just as far up in the gravity, you know, if you have the velocity, just as you fall the same rate, you rise the same rate also. So clearly, you know, it's right there. Um, 1.7 centimeters versus 2.3 centimeters, something like that. Um, I'll take the ruler off and you can probably see it better, but clearly not the same distance. And it really has to be the same distance as if it's the same velocity. So um, clearly the this one has traveled less distance than this has traveled in the same time. So it's clearly they can't be the same velocity. So all of his calculations that he thinks are so precise and so perfect can't be very perfect or precise because, frankly, you know, it's not there. Uh, so, um, yeah, so I'll show the end of his video where he's doing his probably gloating. Um, and, uh, you know, it's on a false premise, clearly. Clearly false premise. All right, so here are his calculations. You can see he has the speed, the angle, exactly the same. Clearly couldn't be the same angle. They've moved a different amount of distance. So all of these numbers are wrong. Okay, miscalculated, mismeasured, however you want to describe it. So he's come up with this um, claim about how fast they're going and how much momentum they have. And he's saying when he does his little whatever subtraction math, it comes out you know, within 1.74% you know, of his theory. Um, and I'm 88% off, you know, my prediction. Um, I don't know exactly what this number represents, but whatever. Um, clearly I'm saying the momentum is conserved, but whatever. So it's based on his calculation of what the momentum in the two objects is. And 
clearly it's premised on the fact that they are traveling the same velocity, that they move the same angular amount. And from the image I showed you, it's clear it's not the same angular amount. All right. Um, they can't they can't change their speed they can't they, they have to go a certain distance in gravity if they have the same velocity they have to go the same distance they can't do it any other way no matter what their mass are is if they have the same velocity they'll travel the same distance up against the gravity all right so we'll play the rest of this and just say oh what a pathetic crud Finally, they're in the order of Ts. They're always 0.32 seconds. There's already 10 frames. So 10 frames equals 0.32 seconds. So he's even saying it's the same amount of time, which, you know, again, is so debatable. The time for the ones coming in, frankly, should be a very different time because it's going twice the speed. So 10 frames should take half the number of, you know, tenths of a second. So I don't even know how this T1 makes any sense. It has to be moving faster. It, so it had to be 10 frames, had to be less time. So that doesn't even make sense. But I'm not going to go through all the details of the things that doesn't make sense. The point is I've proven, okay, that they can't be traveling the same speed after they impact. Let me put this a little, a little too fast, I guess. And then we can start to calculate the, the momentum. So momentum 1 equals mass times velocity, so 13.2 times times 1 times itself. Uh, so for, for mass 2, we're just going to multiply times 3.36, which is, you know, because the free mass is uh, 3.36 times as heavy as the 1 mass. So we can just pick 1 for 1 mass, and then for the heavy mass, we can pick 3.36. All right, so uh, after reflection, momentum is uh, the same, so 5.69 kilograms per meters per second. Uh, for the heavy mass, we have to do 5.69 times 3.36, which is 19.13 kilograms meters per second. So now, now we know the momentum. All right, so now we're going to compare the models again, the professional science versus draft science model. All right, so we know these numbers can't be right because obviously they're not going the same speed, so the whole thing is wrongly premised because it's wrongly calculated, so none of this means anything. But continuing. Conventional science says, right, uh, after reflection, they both will go in opposite direction. So, uh, so, so we got a perfect match. Okay, so just understand it's a perfect match based on wrong numbers. So you know that well, the truth has to be not perfect then. The truth can't be this 1.74% off, right? Because his velocity numbers are 20 at least percent off. One has to be negative, one has to be positive, because direction matters. Um, so, so again, so says them. So some, you know, again, this argument that direction matters when you have an explosion, for example, doesn't make any direction matters crap. It's the same explosion going both ways. There's no directional bullshit. There's no anti-event. Then when we do plus 5.69, um, yeah, four, four. plus 5, minus 19, I think it has to be, it has to be plus 19 and then minus 5. I think I switched the, the science. It has to be plus 19 plus minus 5.69. And that right, so he's claiming there's 19 momentums going in the heavy object and there's 5 in the light object because they're going the same speed, so that makes sense that it would be somewhere around that kind of number. Six, three sixes is 18. Um, I don't know why it's a little bit off, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, so he's saying, again, that we made a bunch, 66%, you know, extra momentum, a total of 66% free momentum over and above what you started with. That equal <clears throat> 13.43, right? And so the initial momentum was 13.2. And when we add these together and treat one side as a negative, one direction as a negative, we get a total momentum of 13.43. 
which is a gain of well, plus 1.74 percent so this is going to be the error percentage this is our error only 1.74 percent right <clears throat> but you're 20 percent off on at least 20 percent off on your velocities so you have a perfect match and you're 25 percent off in the numbers you put in so in reality you're going to miss by a pretty once you fix those velocity numbers well you're obviously going to be off a lot more percentage aren't you ha 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 <laughs> Uh, and then for graph science momentum, okay, we have, we treat momentum always as a positive, no matter what what direction it's going. Always. Yeah, that's right. Stuff matter moving always matters. There, do, does that have to be the phrase? Matter moving always matters. It's always real. It always squishes things. It always does work. That's right. Momentum does work. Always positive. We never subtract momentum. Uh, if we do that, then we get 24.82 uh, total momentum, which means, well, yeah, and the initial momentum was only 30.2, which means we have an increase of plus 88% of momentum. So once again, all right, once again... Yes, you've made almost twice as much momentum. So that's this whole argument. It's not 88% because your values are wrong. But yes, clearly you're arguing you made 66% more momentum. And I'm arguing you didn't. <laughs> yeah, right. What's new? Oh, that's right. Nothing new. Again, it has been shown. So again, it's been shown that you do this. I've proven crap. I've got the answer. I did it right. When obviously with a simple little trick, all I did was put the mouse pointer where the impact is. I let the impact happen. And you see there can't be a possibility that they're going the same speed. So you got it wrong, you blew it again, you screwed it up again, but you're talking so fucking arrogant again. That when we apply a draft science model that we get an insane increase in total momentum, all right? So there's so much more free energy, so much more free momentum. Right, that's your, your liability, not mine. You're the one saying it's okay to create free momentum and that there's some way we can't collect it. So we can just keep banging light things into heavy things, making more momentum, okay? And somehow that has no consequence in the universe. So you can increase the speed of anything you're doing, increase the power of anything you're doing by just putting a heavy thing in front of it and allowing it to be converted into extra, free extra. And that all makes sense to you, fuckheads. Shit. Um, so I don't know, how long are you going to play this game? Right. right, so there you see, look at the arrogance when he made an obvious, mis um, easily de detected mistake. And here he is, fucking off with the mouth again, talking this shit like he's proven with his rickety, shitty. And I'm um, again, it's you know, this the camera sucks, okay? It is a fucking distorto lens. Uh, you know, you have to get all that shit right. Um, you know, and you're just pretending you got good enough data okay to make your claims and it's not good enough clearly it's not good enough because clearly you made a huge mistake Half science once again it has been shown it has been proven that your model all right if you apply uh, um, the fact that if you always treat momentum as a positive value if you're never going to subtract and yes you always are going to end up with an insane amount of extra oh yeah 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 right and it takes not it takes nine times the fuel to go three times as fast well it doesn't where have you proven that? Where have you even proven it takes twice the full, four times the fuel to go twice as fast? Where have you proven any of this shit? So you do this rickety experiment and claim you have proven for physics that it's okay to believe in free momentum. Free mass moving. You can make more mass moving for free. Momentum. <clears throat> Whereas when you treat, treat one side, one direction as a negative momentum and you subtract momentum, then momentum is conserved. Okay, I'm saying that your momentum never, that your, moment, that your model never conserves momentum. And I'm saying yours is a fable, okay, based on Leibniz wrongly. Look, could you believe what Leibniz said? Okay, he started this thing with this false premise. I mean, I made videos on this subject. You ignore those arguments. Do you think it takes the same energy to lift four pounds one foot as it takes to lift one pound four feet? 
Do you think that's the same energy? Do you think that's a correct uh, uh, diagram of how energy <coughs> works in the universe? Or is he flatly just plain wrong? Okay, de Chardelet's round objects denting clay. Do you think that's good theory? Do you think you're going to get a linear relationship between how much the clay is dented, um, you know, how much is displaced with a nonlinear surface you're penetrating the clay with? You know, you won't respond to any of these arguments, any of the theory. And here you are with this one stupid little rickety experiment where you bang a light thing into a heavy thing, you know, with your air carts and your different ways, or your pretending this one experiment proves the case when no what it proves is is this these are really difficult things to measure exactly accurately look at these error percentages once again only 1.74 percent error for conventional science and 88 percent error for so the so we know he like i said we, he's made at least a 20 percent error in the velocities so we know that his this number is not going to stay there. So look at the number and realize, oh, he got a perfect answer with uh, clearly wrong input data. This is six degrees, and this is you know nine degrees, whatever the the difference is. He's got different. the The facts are different than what he put in. Okay, so this nice perfect answer isn't a nice perfect answer anymore. Model. So obviously, this experiment must be extremely badly done once again. It has to yeah, once again, you didn't really check and double check and triple check and do all the crap you need to do before you say, I have an absolute proof. To be absolute crap experiment because it's so, it creates such an error percentage for your model. Wow. So, whoa. What are you going to come up with now? What? Uh, yeah, well, I already showed it, so I mean, I, I'm not going to put it back on the screen again, but what I'll come up with is a simple diagram that shows your numbers can't possibly be correct. What kind of excuses now? Again, bad frame rates. So the details will only become small. You, you only screwed it up. That's what you did, right? I mean, you never said, here's the starting line. The starting line should be where the fucking thing starts. There should be a point zero. That's your beginning. You should have done the same. You should have drawn it from the inside, not the outside of the object in the first place. You should have gone from where the impact takes place and then measured how much they move from that point. That's what you should have done, but instead you measured from the outside for whatever dumbass reason, okay, and then subtracted the outside from the outside. You just made it more complicated than you should have. So if you would have thought about it ahead of time with a little more thought, you would have said, oh yeah, it makes more sense to measure the inside rather than measure the outside. So I can point out all of your stupid errors, <laughs> shithead. Or it's not right? all these flaws, all these little flaws. Do you, again, do you really think that even if all these little flaws are solved, that suddenly this 88%, this 88 error percentage is going to decrease to 1.74, and then for a conventional science, the error percentage will rise, so increase to 88%. And somehow these. Yeah, well, what you're supposed to be measuring is how high it goes up in the gravity because the gravity is what's stopping it from going forever. Error percentages will swap, they will flip, and it will come out perfectly your way. Do you really believe that? Yeah, <clears throat> because I really understand that their velocity is constantly changing. So every frame there is technically a different velocity. That's the truth of it. And so, you know, yes, you need 10 frames to get even frames, but 10 frames end up being too many frames because now you're taking an average that isn't the, the true initial speed. So, yeah, there's lots of ways for this to be difficult and complicated, and you want to pretend it's simple and not complicated. Fine, go ahead and do that. Well, we see that's your passion, okay? You have no theory to back it up. You have no logic to back it up. You're just saying, I believe. And you're not doing it any with any more credibility because you can't even cite in your own physics where they've done any of these experiments. They haven't done any lever experiments. They haven't done any 
crashing experiments. They've never measured the heat put into the ground by a rolling object. They've never done any of these fucking experiments, and you're claiming you're sure they're right, even though they can't show you it taking nine times the fuel to go for three times as fast. And they certainly can't show that, well, when you're going three times as fast, you're going to do nine times the damage. They haven't shown you anything, and you just believe, like a Muslim. Come on. How many more experiments do you need? All right, that's it. And yeah, so this is only the the first half of the video that I've analyzed. I will, I will uh, also do the, the the second half of the video. But that's enough of a video for today. I think the point has been made clear. Yes, you've made your point that you do this over and over and over again. You're just going to keep badgering me with poorly done, poorly analyzed bullshit and saying, there, it's proven again. I proved it again with another piece of rickety shit. Thank you. There again. Your model does not conserve momentum. You are the free energy nut. Your model creates the free energy, not the conventional science model. Energy is conserved. Yeah, prove it somewhere with a real experiment. Okay, again, show me it taking nine times the fuel to go three times as fast. Go ahead and prove it. Prove it that I, you know, you, you can you can have the same spring and you know you put lighter things on and you get less total momentum. The heavier the object you put on it, somehow you get more motion out of the spring. Yeah, those are really brilliant concepts. Because we treat it as a negative value. We subtract the momentum when they go in opposite direction. All right, so why don't you just play one of the five minute videos and then you provide your rational analysis of how, well, can't you understand how there's certain amount of velocity and, and mass and it hits something and it just makes more mass and velocity? What's the big deal? Why shouldn't that be totally logical that, you know, you can create more mass and velocity? Well, as long as you do not accept that, then you are the free energy nut. So it's just the same thing Leibniz made the claim, and he made the claim based on this false premise. So again, do you believe, tell me honestly, do you believe it takes the same amount of work to move four pounds one foot in gravity or one pound four feet in gravity i mean do you believe they have the same impact when they hit the ground they're going to do the same damage that's the better way to state it because obviously you can you can lift them at different uh, rates at speeds different speeds if you lift them at different speeds you'll change how much gravity you had to do work against but their dropping speed can't change Four times the height is only going to be twice the speed. Okay, so a uh, one pound going twice the speed is not going to be the same as a four pound dropping one unit of velocity. That's going to be a truth that you're not going to be able to overcome. So fuck you in the ass to whatever. You're <laughs> it's just such an obnoxious shit. Anyway, enough of that fucker. Now, comments, that's the part that should be funny. Uh, they'll all be celebrating. Will anybody point out he fucked up again? No. All right, great work. Uh, sorry if me switching from image to image very quickly is making you dizzy. Yeah, well, that part was a little bit annoying. Uh, let's see. Bad teachers wave away an epidemic attack as being just a little dizzy. To never on the subject, right? Whoops. Yeah, I still need to work on my presentation style. Okay, so nothing on the subject. Not only does DS fail at physics, he fails at life. See his other channel if you don't believe me. So that's just coming from a guy who calls himself Dick Woodman. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> He's not a failure. <sighs> Hilarious. Um, so this, he says, bad physics. I don't know what that means. Uh, how dare you insulting my K.E. God? So, how do you know my real name? Hmm, his name is God, apparently. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so just, isn't that all so brilliant? <laughs> yeah, marvelous. Oh, God, I hate this planet.
All right, did find. So, yeah, there was nothing new from Ian uh, Gosling. Uh, nothing in the comments worth reading. Mindless Marbles apparently put up a post, though he's bitching again about this elastic thing, and, well, you know, I must have just read it. Uh, a fucking course just when you think draft science had some redeeming quality by correcting his mistake on what others have said. Uh, look, what others say, this is the whole problem. I mean, uh, clearly, physicist Michael said more than one thing, okay? In the three videos, you could say, happened before the lever, right? He had his pre-lever video, whatever the hell that was. Um, he made lots of claims, okay, about what the outcomes were going to be. And the fact is, is that, you know, I made the simple assertion. All you're going to do is crash the weight in and on one side and you have the expectation the momentum is going to come out on the other side. He said, no, that wouldn't happen. So he didn't think it could possibly happen without a spring. So that's just a truth. All right. He predicted right to my face that now it would be half and half. That's what he said. OK, so there's no denying that. And then in his final results, I've just shown how the minus signs are gone. He doesn't have them there. The same direction is not the same direction anymore. Things going this way, you know, things going right or things going left aren't assigned with the same same sign. I mean, how more ridiculous can you get? He claims direction matters, but it doesn't. He just changes it to suit himself, right? So in one minute, it, direction matters. The other case, in the elastic case, direction matters. All of a sudden, in the inelastic case, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's bullshit. All right, he reverses on that. Previously, I made a, a post giving DS credit. You never, whatever, credit anything. But anyway, for admitting his mis he mischaracterized. Yeah, again, it's hard to characterize him correctly because he doesn't seem to think that hard things are elastic. So isn't that the truth? I mean, are you going to deny that as a simple truth, that it does seem his perception is hard things without springs are not elastic? He considers them inelastic. Isn't that the factual truth here? That he only thinks it, hard things have to stick with glue or something. Somehow that makes a difference? Anyway, predictions for that elastic case of collision with the lever. See my post, blah, 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 blah. We know he's applying cart logic to pendulums or um, levers. That he's applying the same logic as if the experiment is the same thing. When obviously these are different experiments. This is after I pointed out Michael's initial predictions did not apply to elastic collision case. And well again, are you going to tell me that hard things hitting hard things isn't elastic? Is that going to be your argument? How can, what is the case of inelastic? Well, you just, maybe could you just explain what an inelastic case is? So if I have hard materials and I'm doing an experiment, how do I make the hard materials into inelastic? Exactly. As corroborated by my comments in the original video, so more bullshit. Now DS has completely reversed his correction of himself. Well, I obviously made the correction saying, well, look, he did write down numbers, okay? And those numbers are, we could say, his true uh, definition of what we can expect to have happen. And what was missing from the numbers? Rational signs. This way, okay, was minus, And this way, over here, was plus. It's going the same way. How come it has the, the same sign, uh, you know, a different sign? Uh, even though it's on the record that Michael did make correct predictions. So it's on the record that he didn't. So again, that's just another lie. So you can say, predicted what? What, did he, what velocity did he get actually right? Okay, for the elastic case. And DS has misunderstood. Uh, bullshit. Anyways, I really don't appreciate it being burdened by draft science petty, disingenuous responses. Well, whatever that and I and others to keep responding over and over so I'll just put the following highlights numbered below yeah and I'll just suggest watch my videos where I play the clips where he's saying the shit right to my face I wish I could write more but honestly MBS does not even deserve the time oh look at that so he misrepresents predictions see this video blah 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 and I've written above already yeah, go ahead, see the videos. 
where I play his clip and I uh, explain how uh, only this is the only rational way to interpret what he's saying. Okay, he has made a completely unsubstantiated stories about what physics Michael did and did not do. It's clear what he did and did not do. He put a lump of clay on it and said it has something to do with my uh, the experiment I suggested. I mean, it's clear he had no respect for a goddamn thing I suggested. And it's clear his prediction, his initial prediction of what will happen when they're non-elastic, whatever that means, right? Um, in his opinion, a steel ball hitting the lever is non-elastic, is, inela is inelastic. Do you agree that's his opinion? Okay. And so he made, he gave me the prediction for a non-elastic when I'm clearly arguing for, well, I don't know exactly how the steel is inelastic. All right. He spursely claims PM actually did results disproving kinetic energy as a valid form of energy. Well, I'm saying he created free momentum in, you know, six. <laughs> uh, you know, two of the series of experiments and intentionally hid them. Well, he clearly did that. So again, you're going to defend the fact that he didn't video the hard elastic collision. So he did it and didn't bother videoing it. I mean, is that to you believable? It's not to me believable. So if you can fall for that, you go ahead and fall for it. But clearly, if the results are, as you state, coming out his way, then why wouldn't he video that important experiment, even if he only did it once because he doesn't want to break his fragile little cart? You really think a physicist can't per figure out how to disperse the weight over the front of the cart? I mean, what a bullshit excuse. Okay. He falsely thinks his grounds for an accusation that PM actively deceives others. Yes, well, I'm just saying it's an act of deception to say, I did the experiment, Ben, and it came out this way, which is exactly the way I predicted. Yeah, that's pretty bogus if you're not going to video it. With no evidence, only, so, only just so stories. That's his stories. And every time he tells the story, he told the story differently, didn't he? He told the story three different times about what happened. And each time he adds some little glorification, right? Like the last one was, well, I had to protect my carts. You know, it would have been a totally disastrous if it got scratched or something. Okay, which is so incredibly ironic, given that DS loves to make courtroom analogies. Incredibly stupid. No, I think that's a good courtroom argument. When somebody changes their story each time, that's a pretty good witness to start playing with. Because it doesn't seem like that witness is very credible. Alright, last but not least, his own account of PM's results isn't even consistent with itself. Why? He has kept saying that the that the critical test for figuring whether the lever experiment is valid or not is the one mass at one radius versus one mass at one radius. No, I say it's the critical experiment to figure out how much you're losing to the fucking lever. It's obviously meaningless as an experiment in terms of proving anything about kinetic energy and momentum because you didn't change the masses. The whole point is you have to change the mass to screw up the kinetic energy formula. Oh, you have to change the velocities, for fuck's sake. It's the squared part. Anyway, as the mass on side B gets launched with the same speed as the speed of the incoming mass on A. Yes, and it won't be the same speed because we found that, yes, you lose 10% at least to the lever. This prediction is for a perfectly elastic case, and he has said it's really not bad. Yeah, 90% is pretty goddamn good as there was a less than 10% loss to the lever. Despite this, he contradicts himself and the evidence by saying, if you don't want to transfer the energy, yes. If you don't want to transfer the energy, yes, put a spring there because then you'll reflect half of it back. Yeah, the point is, is the springs will allow reflection just as uh, let's see, what, what argument can you make about the inelastic, the hard things hitting versus sticking? Forcing something to stick can force momentum to do something. So with the carts, it works. Putting something sticky works in terms because you're going in the same direction. Obviously, with the lever, you, 
the sticky shit isn't going to work because you're not going in the same direction. But whatever. Um, the point is, is I don't see any point in going from elastic to super elastic. You're saying that somehow the spring is necessary to the function. I'm saying the spring shouldn't be necessary to the function. I've made it clear that the real problem is is that you can't have a, a weight being pushed by less force. So if the lever's using up some of the force, then you have to make the weight lighter to expect to get all of the energy into it. You have to make it weigh what the force is able to produce. So if you're losing 10% to the lever, you have to compensate and make the object 10% lighter. Okay, or move it in 10%. I mean, the 10% lighter probably wouldn't be a bad idea, frankly. You know you're losing 10% to the lever, so just make the object you're launching 10% lighter. All right, uh, Ian Gosling has a follow-up video showing the difference with and without springs is negligible here. Well, it wasn't negligible, it was actually observable. The springs did seem to work a little bit better in the equal mass case. Anyway, Gary has no la leg to stand on here, so it's fine. I'm glad you're playing my videos, so excellent. <laughs> Let's see, draft science lever expelling volume 7, 150, not 33. Yes, yeah, so that was, that's a really old video uh, about the trans, that this is again about the, the stinking pendulum bullshit. So, and the other one's the three week old bullshit. All right. What a pile of crap. So he accounts for nothing ever. So the point that I pointed out that those those plus and minus numbers are absolute bullshit, right? Now, will he concede? Yeah, the plus and minuses are bullshit. How can you say the same direction is a different direction? I mean, that's just playing games now. In one case, direction is noticed, plus and minus. In the other case, fuck it. The same direction is the same direction. Uh, you know, it doesn't make any sense. It's a double... It's it's clearly using signs to his own convenience. He's not using it based on rational obligation. He's just saying, I'll put whatever sign I feel like it on it. All right. So. Ugh, crap again. But anyway. Ugh. <laughs> so anyway. Till the next time and such. I probably should, uh, well, I think I already deleted the picture. Yeah, so fuck it. Um, anyway, till the next time and such and so forth and what.